evening folks. I know I promised uh, many more videos in the near future. Uh, that was uh, around about two years ago now, so uh, I make that uh, a long, short wait. <laughs> anyway, I'm back. Uh, I've got a full garage um, full of bikes trading and uh, lots of stuff to review, lots of stuff planned for the future, but I'll explain that in a, another video. Let's kick things off with, uh, with a review. So, what I have here today is a 2005 SV650. This is uh, the normal SV650, not the S with the fairing, although there's not very much difference between them apart from the position uh, and the fairing itself. So what is it? This is a 650cc entry-level sports V-twin. Um, it's putting out about 70 horsepower. Um, the SV in general has been around since 1999. That was launched as a curvy model, uh, which looked a lot like the TL1000 of the time, and that was uh, with carbs. That hung around until about 2003 when it was updated to this model, which is fuel injected, totally different frame, um, and uprated things here and there. Dash is different. It's basically a whole new bike. But this design has basically hung around until last year, so it was in Suzuki's lineup unchanged for around about 14 years. Um, so that tells you something about it already. It's uh, much maligned as a girl's bike by Forum Heroes um, because it doesn't put out much power um, and it's very light. Uh, but it's made quite a splash when it landed and was extremely competitive. In fact, sort of dominated the Mini Twins class when it came out and still they're super common in that class for racing today. So anyway, enough chat about what it is. You can see that. Let's uh, get on and ride it. Now, uh, here is uh, the SV's uh, real trump card. Wow, that sounds amazing. Anyway, let's get on. Ah, oh, Jesus, I do love these bikes. Okay, so what's the SV650 like to ride? This bike has only about 70 horsepower. It uh, delivers that horsepower very well. It's about 50 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, loads of that comes in straight away. So straight from the bottom of the rev range, you've got lots of nice power. Delivered beautifully from the fueling. Uh, this particular example's got a Beowulf can on, but it doesn't have a power commander, and it still responds extremely nicely. So you could cruise around in the lower half as long as you keep it above 3,000 revs. This is a twin after all, so it doesn't like to lump along in sort of 2,000 revs. It will get a bit, you know, a bit squirrely and a bit jerky then. But you can happily cruise along all day in the lower revs, and it's got enough torque to get you through modest sort of overtakes in the sort of town. But uh, from about 6,000 onwards, you get a nice rush to the top end. If we got some space, I could demonstrate that. So that's in the lower revs, and if we get another chance, I'll show you the top end. Another ch no chance this time. So from about 6,000 onwards, you get a nice rush up to about 10,000 where it feels like you've got peak horsepower and it's not really worth pushing it out to 11. But it really is a lovely engine, and on B roads like this, uh, below about 90 miles an hour, you never really feel like there's a lack of, lack of power. It's very perky, very lively, and especially if you've got the exhaust, then it just, it really is awesome fun. No chance here. So, one of the things that I really like about the SV is, yes, it's fuel injected, but um, it's delivered really nicely. There is a little tiny bit of, a, of an open, closed throttle bump, but it's nothing major, and you can easily ride around it. So, uh, take note, GSR, GSR 600. Uh, Suzuki apparently forgot between uh, 2003 and 2006 uh, how, to, uh, how to do fuel injection. 
Six gears. And the wonderful buttery smooth uh, really is a delight and one of the main advantages of the SV650 over other entry-level bikes like this is it's extremely light when you compare it to um, other bikes like say the GSR 600 especially the Bandit the Hornet um, it's a lot lighter so the dry weight is about 165 kilograms whereas you're looking at probably about 189 185 for the other bikes in this class or way heavier if it's a Bandit say and that means that with the uh, perky, torquey delivery of the engine and the combined uh, light weight, you really do get a shift on uh, below 100 miles an hour. It does start to run out of steam when you get uh, up above about 80 miles an hour. You, you can push on, uh, especially you can push on to higher speeds, but it's not really what the bike's about. Oh, don't rain. Looks like we're going to be racing the rain here. One other thing the SV does very well is wheelies. Lovely. I'm not going to push it too hard. We are on video after all, and this is a public road. But um, suffice to say, when I was in the learning days of, uh, of riding, blimey hell, that's big. When I was in the, uh, the younger days of my riding, so uh, the first two or three years, I actually bought uh, a Fed SV650, uh, brand new, in about 2007, and I had it on finance. So I've owned, I owned that for about three years. This is uh, currently my girlfriend's bike, um, and I suggested it as a way for her to get back into biking. She has had a fire blade, but she had a long, uh, a long way away from biking. So I have a significant experience with these bikes. And one thing that it really taught me is uh, how to wheelie. Because it's got a nice amount of torque and it's quite light. When you sit back, you can very easily flick the clutch or on off the throttle to get the front up. And because of that wonderful gearbox, you can knock it into second. And if, you, if you're brave enough, you can keep it going all day up into third. Fantastic bike for that. So it's very dynamic and very useful. So if we move on to the handling, it's obviously a cheap bike uh, and you can feel that but I'd say it's very confidence-inspiring. Because of the light weight, you can really, really push it about on B-roads, and the suspension is budget, but um, it stays friendly and composed up until you really push it, which beginners aren't really gonna, very, gonna do, where the front does become a little bit flighty. It's talky enough that when you're not going 200 miles an hour and barreling like 200%, you can really push it. But on roads like this where it's not too bumpy, the long wide sweeping corners, you're below 100 miles an hour, up around the 70 miles an hour range. It really is lovely. It's very light steering, even on the, uh, even on the, the fared version with the sports position. It's still fairly wide bars. The brakes are good enough. They're, again, very budget, but because of the light weight, you don't really feel any problems with them, as long as you keep them serviced. It's like my Bandit. 
again, not a fast bike, but on these sort of roads, you don't really want a super fast bike. You'll just feel held back by it. very aggressive. This one's got a bit of a squared rear tyre, so it's not... It, it sort of falls into the corners, but that's not normal. And again, this gearbox is very friendly, you've got very good fueling. All in all, very friendly learner bike. said if you really do push things or you go down a particularly bumpy road you will find that the the front can get a little bit flighty so the suspension does tend to show its uh, its cheapness and especially well now this is uh, getting on for about 12 years old so it does start to show its age but Jezza but one of the uh, other advantages of the SV650 is that it's because um, it shares a lot of parts with uh, other motorbikes in the Suzuki range, it's incredibly upgradable. And because the design itself has been around for so goddamn long, unchanging until about 2016, um, there is a massive community with upgrade suggestions and all sorts to make these things really fly. So in terms of suspension and brakes, there's uh, the common upgrade, which is uh, swapping out the front end for a GSX-R, I think it's a 750K4 front end. So you've got way better brakes, way better suspension, uh, upgrade, upgrade the rear shock, and you've got something that seriously handles now. And again, I mentioned earlier, these things really dominate in the Mini Twin class, and if you've not, if you've not seen, uh, gone down to Brands Hatch or your local racetrack and seen uh, the Mini Twin guys on these bikes, you've, you, uh, you can really understand what they can do. They are seriously fast, and there are people that can help you upgrade your bike so you get this bike and you begin and you can and people can help you to grow with the bike as your skills grow you can upgrade the bike for relatively little outlay i mean i i can't imagine that a gsxr front end costs that much i haven't really looked but uh, there we go let's get that torque going again god i could never get tired of that engine sound and again and i could this is a very small bike with a small engine but i could afford to be lazy there if I was on a 600 IL-4, that would have had to be a change down, maybe, or a much longer overtake. Wouldn't have been as pleasant. Now, if you're going to use this as a distance bike, it's not bad, actually. Um, at 70 miles an hour, the engine's still relatively relaxed. It's at about uh, 5,500 RPM. Uh, you've got the nice purring sound of the engine if you've got a decent exhaust, which I must add is an absolute essential. Uh, it completely transforms the bike. If you uh, get an exhaust, a power commander, take the snorkel out the airbox, maybe uh, it's suggested sometimes you put spacers between the uh, between the tank and the, the frame and uh, that gives you a bit more air. It sounds and feels absolutely amazing. Fantastic. Um, that's worth the price of admission alone. But anyway, I digress. Uh, as a distance bike, it's not bad. You can, uh, especially this naked version, if you keep it to 70, 75, the wind blast isn't too bad. This little mini fairing up the front seems to do a reasonable job of keeping the wind off. Um, the engine's fairly relaxed. The tank range is mm, not amazing. It's probably about 120 till the light comes on, and you've probably got 30, 40 miles before you're really buggered for fuel, but, you know, whoever really wants to... No one really wants to test that theory too hard, do they? Um, but it'll get you there. Um, we recently went to Bath, and that's a good two and a half hour, three hour ride. Perfectly fine. Girlfriend on this, I was on the Bandit. Lovely. Uh, if you get the S version, however, I wouldn't recommend it as a distance bike. Uh, I found it incredibly uncomfortable. Because, uh, well, one of the points is this is relevant to both bikes, but I find that the seat is a little bit uncomfortable. It's got sharp corners, it's not particularly supportive. Um, 
can get uncomfortable after a while and the position on the other one is quite fairly long stretch to the bars I found it gave me real problems around the, the middle of my back up near the neck um, I did do a few long trips on it but I regretted it so um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for that but it, again it is doable but there are other bikes, even sports bikes that are a bit better for that kind of thing So, uh, other advantages of this bike that sort of, in my mind, puts it above other bikes of its class is, again, because it's been around for so long, you can get insanely cheap versions of this. The, the old curvy one, which is still a good bike, maybe a tad less reliable than the, than the fuel injection one, because you, you'll have to deal with carb issues, um, and I've heard problems with the, the fuel pump and the CDI. Uh, on those versions. Uh, you can get those easily for under a grand, maybe 800 quid and get you a good one, um, a grand for a Minter, but you know, there are so many of the fuel injection versions which I think is a slightly better bike and a nicer looking one as well. For uh, a grand to 1500, um, if you really want a super minty, uh, new, like, younger version, then you're looking about two and a half to three thousand, but I wouldn't bother to be honest with you because it's changed so little. Uh, you might as well just buy on uh, on mileage and condition rather than age when it comes to a bike like this. So, 1500 quid gets you this in good condition, and it handles like a dream. Sounds amazing. Easy to ride. Fantastic gearbox. What else can you get at this price range? Uh, not a lot really, um, you got the Hornet, which is again, I would say that's a valid alternative, um, the first generation Honda Hornet, because uh, again that will be between £1,000 and £1,500 pounds for a good example. A uh, bit heavier, but again a bit more powerful, it's got a nice perky engine even though it's an inline four. But apart from that, you, you're sort of looking at bandits and parallel twins, maybe the lower end of uh, reasonable ER6s, but I'm not a huge fan of the ER6, it's incredibly vibey, this is a little bit vibey but not too much, um, incredibly vibey, feels very plasticky, it's a parallel twin so it hasn't got the character, even though it tries, tries very hard, it hasn't got the character of, uh, of this bike. So. At this price range, there isn't much to touch it, really, in my opinion. And especially not something that you can modify quite so much as this. And because the examples that you can find are numerous, you can afford to be choosy when buying. So if there's something that's not quite right, or it's a bit rusty, which is... Uh, it's a Suzuki. I love Suzukis, but... Um, they, uh, they like a bit of rust. You can afford to walk away because there's going to be one in your local area that's got all the things you want on it or uh, an unmolested example if you want. Another advantage of these bikes being so numerous is that spares are absolutely rife. carried away with a lovely bit of road this but the spares are absolutely everywhere um, I had a couple of incidents on, on my old SV um, and finding a spare wheel here or there a gear lever everything that you might need it's all over eBay oh dear sorry but they're all over eBay um, I recently managed to get hold of a, a spare wheel for this for uh, 165 all delivered from Lithuania, weirdly, um, with, with the discs on. No problems whatsoever. Reliability-wise, um, there's a few issues, especially if you're looking at the older, cheaper examples. They're, they're going to have a few. Um, common ones are, like I said, rust. You really do need to keep up on top of it. Um, Brakes need to be taken care of, otherwise they really will lose lose a bit of their their shine, their potency. Um, 
Also, there's a lot of stories, uh, I've experienced it myself, of the front plug hole for the spark plug um, getting full of water. The seal fails and they get full of water and it rains and then you get running issues in uh, on the front cylinder, so you lose a cylinder. It's fairly easy to fix yourself because it's, it's easy to get to the plugs um, and you can reseal them and get a new spark plug in there, but um, just things to look out for. It's easy to get hold of spares, um, and really that's about it. Um, apart from the usual things, looking out for you know just people wheelie these a lot, so look out for the head bearings, make sure all of that's good. Um, any dense scrapes, being an entry level bike, they're going to have been dropped a lot, but uh, they're easily fixable, and spares are, are easy to obtain. I would say uh, look for the one with mods you've got on it because most of them are going to have an exhaust so make sure you get one of those because you're going to you're going to need it when you get this bike because it really has bugger all character when you're uh, when you're on the standard exhaust and that's very heavy and ugly Speaking of uh, ugly or not I think it's an incredibly good looking bike it's aged extremely well for a 14 year old bike when you compare it to the, um, the GSX-R from 2003, I think it's aged incredibly nicely. Um, the frame looks fantastic. It's not a true trellis. I mean, it sort of pretends to be a pressed trellis, but <laughs> it's not. It's just a just an interesting looking frame, but I like the girder structure. The rear LED tail light, tail lights are way ahead of their time. Um, I like the round front headlight, a bit of traditional sort of, um, something a bit traditional in there. But all in all, I think it's aged incredibly well. Um, you, for not being updated at all, and the colour schemes you can find on it are numerous if you, if you go by year. This is my favourite colour. My um, Verd SV was the same colour, actually. Uh, just with the fairing, obviously. But I, I think it looks incredibly good. The, the year later had a nice sort of pale blue, if I remember correctly. You can get lower fairings for it to make it look a bit more sporty, and it does look good with the fairings on or off if you get the, the fared model. Um, in terms of ergonomics and usability on this one, the mirrors, I think they look fun. They work very well, they look nice, I like the square design. Um, the reach to the bars, I'm not sure if these are aftermarket bars or not, I'm going to hazard a guess and say no. But the bars are in a, in a great position, you could poodle along all day and not have any problems. I'm cruising at 60 here and I'm super comfortable. Um, the, the clocks, nice and simple. Uh, again, haven't aged badly at all. You've got a massive taco here, the speed, nothing too much to clutter it up. Nice to see it's got a clock, your idiot lights. Um, temperature is also good. Some bikes don't have that, which I just cannot understand. Uh, trip meter, you know, it's all, it's all simple, but it's all very easy to read. It's quite good looking, still looks modern. Fantastic bike. Uh, under seat storage, not really worth speaking about. It's reasonable for a pillion, but uh, they they do tend to, uh, unless your pillion's incredibly light, they do suffer from pillion, uh, from pillion use. You'll be wheeling everywhere and your brakes will feel like crap because it's a lightweight bike, so any addition that you make in terms of weight is going to affect the bike more than, uh, than something like, say, the Bandit, which doesn't even feel it because it, it weighs a metric fuck ton anyway. <laughs> so, I'm sort of running out of things to say here. Um, apart from, I would recommend this if you're going to look for it. And this one's not for sale, unfortunately. This is my girlfriend's and she's uh, very fond of it. But if you're going to buy one, I wouldn't spend anything more than 1,500 quid. Uh, if you're looking at other bikes, um, the only ones I would suggest around this, uh, the only ones I would actually suggest around this price range are the Hornet, uh, maybe the Phaser, although it's a, aged a lot. The first generation Phaser and maybe the second gen has aged a lot worse. Although, so in closing. 
I think it's a fantastic bike. I would suggest buying one. If you're going to buy one, I wouldn't spend more than 1,500 pounds. Uh, maybe going up to 2,000 if you can see one that's in excellent condition. But you'll, you'll get a good bike for that price. And feel free to walk away because there'll be millions of, of examples that are in good, better condition if you find one that's, that's a little bit dodge. In terms of competition that you can look out for, the ones I suggest are the Hornet. That's a good bike, same price. Uh, still relatively modern feeling as well. You got the first and second gen phasers, which yeah, yeah, good bikes. Uh, the first gen phaser feels a little bit um, feels very dated now with the carbs and, and the clocks and the looks. So I don't know if that's your thing, go for it. But the second gen's a bit better. But you'll be on the dog end at 1,500 quid, I think, when you're looking for one. Um, moving up the budget, I would suggest possibly. Um, Possibly the Z750 is the only one I would really consider, although maybe not so good for a beginner, it's a lot more powerful. Twenty minutes later. If any of you are interested, this exhaust, which I think sounds fantastic, is a 380 mil Beowulf. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Uh. Oh, b on. The recorder. Oh my Yep. No, could it, it probably went miles ago. Two hundred and twenty pounds. <laughs> Oh my god, you're so highly visible. Whoa! You see it? How buggered is it? It looks alright, oh no. The batteries came out. But, in general, let's get back to the car. No, it's alright. I don't think we're going to see anything else. I can always jimmy the, like, jimmy rig the batteries. Jimmy! Jimmy! Wow. Sweet. That was easy. Yeah.